Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of the L Double T Podcast. My name is Brendan Plays. Final show before Christmas, only a few days away now. What if it's Thursday today? Three days till Christmas. Wow, that's um, that's crazy. Um, it doesn't feel like Christmas to me. And it doesn't feel like Christmas to me because in my house, I have no Christmas decorations. Um, there's a few Christmas lights around, not a lot, none in my street. Um, my, my street's like a little bit of a cut-off kind of street, so I can understand why. No one's really going to drive past it or see the lights, so it doesn't really matter. But um, I don't have a Christmas tree up. I have not one single Christmas decoration around. Yeah, when I go out, there's, you know, Santa Claus, you know, people dressed up as Santa, and, you know, there's um, decorations around in, you know, in the, in the city malls and, and whatever like that, but it just... This doesn't feel like Christmas at the moment. The reason why I don't have any decorations is because I'm not going to be at this house for Christmas tomorrow. I'm driving back to the parents' house, to the family house, um, and I'll be there, um, I don't know yet, probably maybe a week max. So we're going to be doing that. So we're going to spend Christmas there, and um, I'm guessing they'll have the decorations out. I don't, I don't know how much they're going to go out, probably not that much. But I guess we'll have a bit of Christmas spirit there. It's something that's kind of been gone. You know, that's the thing with age you know when you get older christmas just doesn't feel like christmas there's probably i think i don't know i can't speak for experience but i feel like when you hit to like i don't know 14 15 that period of time until you get your own kids is that that period of time is when christmas really doesn't mean that much to you and then when you get your own kids your own family once again christmas starts to mean something again because you you see it in your kids, you kind of live Christmas again through your kids. That's just what I expect, what I kind of read, what I kind of learn you know, from watching things and just how I interpret it. But um, yeah, I haven't really had that much Christmas spirit in the last few years at all. Um, and I guess, you know, once you get, you know, your kids grow up, you kind of lose the Christmas spirit again type of deal. But um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. It's just interesting. I thought I'd kick the show off with that, but um. My Christmas plans, like I said, just going back for the family. It's going to be an interesting Christmas. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to go into it much more detail than that, but it's going to be an interesting one. Um, yeah, so you know, that's something that um, I'm going to have to try and uh, deal with, but um should be okay. And um, yeah, so the current plans right now is I will be away from tomorrow. I will be making a couple of episodes of GM mode and universe mode whilst, you know, before I go. And then, um, I think while I'm away, I mean, I'm going to take all my equipment. I'm going to take a microphone, the one that I use on the road. Um, and I'll see what I can do. I'm going to upload when I can and, um, try and make something whilst I'm away. The problem is obviously, my internet won't be as strong. I don't have my computer, so things get a little bit more difficult to do. It's just a little bit more hassle, a bit more trouble. So I'll try my best, but it is Christmas, and I'm sure you guys will understand, but I will try and upload whilst I'm away. Um, knowing me, I'll even try to get a video out for Christmas. I probably won't, but I'll try. Um, my Christmas present to you, I guess, will be um, the next episode of Universe Mode, the draft edition of universe mode and i'll probably put that out um tomorrow um and then i'll have a, a gm mode out as well so that's my christmas present to you guys the draft edition uh, i guess that's a good segue into the next topic um wrestlemania we're just kind of firing off today guys uh we'll talk about roadblock we'll talk about raw and smackdown as well in today's show um but we'll just fire it out with good start I'm, I'm liking the direction just kind of just go with the flow um, WrestleMania. So, WrestleMania happened um, a day that I did not want it to happen. Um, last week, we had everything planned to go ahead for Saturday. Um, we got the video out on time. Um, we were ahead of schedule. But what happened is that my video didn't render. Um, and what that kind of means, if you're not familiar, is when you compile all your clips, you do it, you know, you basically you create a video and then you go to save it. And it just kind of, I, don't, I can't really explain it, I guess, just kind of um, puts everything together into one whole um, one whole file. There we go. And um, yeah, then you upload that one file. It failed to do that. It failed to render, which is what we call it. It failed to render. And 
Um, I couldn't figure it out. It, every time it renders, it takes about eight to nine hours to render. And as it turned out, it would stop rendering at every single point at 80%, 86% finished. And I just couldn't figure it out. So obviously there was a problem around 86% mark. And I would look at the problem, I'd have a look, and I couldn't find it. Everything worked absolutely perfectly, which is the reason why I you know, was able to put it in the video to begin with, because the, the clip worked fine. As it turned out, it was the main event match, Finn Balor versus AJ Styles. That was the match that just didn't work, and for whatever reason, it just wouldn't render. Um, I tried it a few different times just on its own, and it worked a couple times. It worked, didn't work sometimes, so I was a little unsure. I didn't know, so... The first couple of times I couldn't figure out what was going on, so I kept on trying, kept on trying, and unfortunately we ran out of time. It was going to be late. It didn't work, and I was furious. I was disappointed, really sad. Just it sucked, it really sucked. You know, I planned to have this show go up on Sunday, have a huge stream, get hopefully a thousand viewers, maybe even break our stream record, have a really massive stream, everyone come along and enjoy it. But it just didn't happen. It just wasn't the case. Just couldn't get it to work. Just kept on trying, kept on trying, kept on trying. Eventually, I figured out the problem, and I fixed it, and it worked. Um, it was disappointing, though, that the problem was that match. That match, the original version, I thought was a lot better than the second one that I recorded. Um, but in saying that, it turned out it turned out that, you know, okay the second time I got it. It turned out pretty fine. I was okay with it, but um, disappointing that I had to um, not use the first one. And I just don't know what went wrong. I even um, compressed it. I, I did all this other crap to try and get it to work. It just wouldn't work. I tried everything I can, and I just lost a lot of time. It just it just takes forever. You know, really, you only get, what, three chances to do a render in a day. And, you know, I tried everything. I just couldn't get it to work. And unfortunately, it was delayed. And eventually, I had to make a decision. Would I still stream it? And when would I stream it? You know, what am I going to do? And I decided, you know what, screw it, I'll stream it, it's going to be on Wednesday, I knew a lot of people were going to be at school still, um, I knew, well everyone from the UK was going to be around, if they were going to watch it they could, because it was going to be prime time, prime time UK time, so I knew, that, I knew that was going to be a plus, but I knew everyone from the US was going to miss out, and maybe they'll be able to catch um, the second half of the show, that was kind of my thinking, so I thought I'd capitalize on that. And and plus, you know, when I streamed, it was 4.45 a.m. I had to stay up until, I think, about 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m. to get the um, the stream done. So I had, did an all-nighter. Surprisingly, I wasn't too bad. Normally, I'm really tired when the streams are on, but this time, I was just, I was ready for it. I guess because the night before, um, I stayed up all night um, working on trying to get the video fixed. So lots of um, late nights in the last couple of days, which sucks because I actually had my sleeping pattern on on, on point, you know, for the first time in, you know, a couple months since W2K17 came out, I finally got my sleep pattern sorted, and when I say that, I mean I go to bed at like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock max, and wake up at 9 or 10 o'clock, which is, which is a good time for me, but now, you know, today I woke up at 1 o'clock, so, yeah, it's, it's screwed again, so it's not good, but I think we'll fix it over the Christmas break, and, um, you know, it'll be good to, to take a bit of time, but, I mean, I kind of took my, my time off a couple of weeks ago when I went to Adelaide and I had that one week break. Um, so I'm kind of like raring to go. I'm kind of ready to like make more videos and keep on um, doing what I'm doing. So it's not, it's just a bit of an inconvenience at the moment. I know that's pretty bad saying Christmas is inconvenient for me, but um, it kind of is right now because I just want to keep on making the videos, just keep doing what I'm doing. But um, I can't really because... Whilst I'm away, my computer, my laptop's just nowhere near as good as my computer. So I'm going to get frustrated using my laptop, but I'm so used to using my Beast computer now. So I'll try my best. I'll try my best to get the videos done for you guys, but um, can't really promise a hell of a lot. But we'll try. We'll 100% try. But um, yeah, so I've just been um, doing a lot of gaming as well in between. I've been trying to um, play as much games as I possibly can. I, I know, guys, I'll talk about Roblox soon. I'll just kind of... Um, get you guys up to speed what's been going on. Um, you know, whilst I've uh, been waiting for WrestleMania to finish, uh, my girlfriend's gone away for for Christmas now, so I haven't seen her for a while. So I've been home alone for the last few few days. And, you know, whenever I'm home alone, I'm always watching movies or TV shows. It's something that I haven't really... You know, because, you know, when you watch... When you got your girlfriend around, she always wants to watch something with you. And... 
I, she probably won't. She shouldn't. Hopefully, she won't listen to this show. But she'll she'll admit that she, you know, her and I, we take forever to pick something. We we've got very different tastes. So for us to come together and and pick something that we want to watch that we're both going to like, it's quite difficult. Especially TV shows, we're very different in that. Like I love Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, Sons of Anarchy, those types of shows. She hates those type of shows. So that's out of the out of the question. Movies. We're a little bit better, but um, it's good when you can just kind of look at Netflix and just pick for yourself, and that's what I've been able to do. So I've been able to just kick back and watch some shows, and um, I think that's what I'm going to try and do whilst I'm away. Um, just catch up and watch some movies and, and do that type of thing. Um, that's what I like to do when I you know have some spare time. I play, play games, definitely, but um, I like to play games and have a movie going at the same time. Like, I... I don't know, I like to ha- do two things at once if I can. Either I've got to listen to some music, I've got to have a podcast on, or I've got to be watching a show whilst I'm playing a game. I can't just play a game by itself unless it's a really big story-driven game that I'm super into the story. Um, I've got to have something else going. So that's my past couple of days, just been doing that. Um, for all you Australians, the cricket's back on, the Big Bash, um, the Big Bash Big Bash League. Can I try and speak and say that right? Um, I've been watching that religiously. I'm so excited for that being back on too. Uh, my Sydney Thunder though are doing absolutely shit, so <laughs> I'm not happy about that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been up to since uh, making WrestleMania. I've been working on the new draft video as well. I think the draft's going to be pretty fun. You know, I like the way that I'm doing it this year compared to recent times. It's still very similar, but just some different things I'm doing and been able to add some cutscenes and things in. Just some different. Um, different style, I've been able to use um, some different things that W2K17 offers that the other games don't to try and make this a little bit better, so I'm liking where I'm, you know, where I'm going with it, and I think you guys will enjoy it, if not, well, I tried, you know, that's the thing about WrestleMania, I didn't really talk about it, but I got a lot of negative feedback about WrestleMania as well, um, a lot of people hated the ending, a lot of people didn't like something, a certain thing, and some people saying, oh my god, I watched the whole show and I hate the end." I hated the ending, so I hated the entire show. A three-hour show, they didn't like the ending, so they hated the entire show. I mean, that's just wrestling fans for you. I mean, I've said it so so many times, but wrestling fans, yeah, I'm a wrestling fan, but we are the worst type of fans I have ever, ever seen. 100%. We just can't like anything. We complain about everything. Even if something's good, you're still going to find something you didn't like about it. And I do it. I know every every other wrestling fan does it, but we just do it. I, I don't know why. If you know, we say, "Oh man, I really enjoyed that Lesnar and Owens match," but I hated the ending to the show, so I fucking hated the entire show. I mean, that's the type of comments I got. But um, a lot of positive feedback too. A lot of people really enjoy the show. Really enjoy the stream. Stream actually went really well this time. I think um, I'm getting a little bit better at um, organizing the stream a bit better and and kind of getting that all um, all done. We had a lot of um. We had a new uh, feature on Twitch where we can bet on the matches and we had you know, point system set up properly this time. We tried to do it in the past, but it just wasn't working properly. This time, we've got it all set up, really looking good. Um, we don't get a lot of viewers on Twitch. Mainly, everyone watches on YouTube, but um, you know, so all our loyal Twitch viewers have set up a few different things for you to watch there. But um, yeah, mostly, mostly um, positive feedback for WrestleMania. I felt it was just missing something, and I think maybe, yeah, the ending might have been missing something big to happen, but I just, to be honest, I just couldn't think of anything big to do. I mean, there was really nothing, really nothing to happen. I mean, a heel turn, well, um, I mean, why? That wouldn't make any sense, you know? So uh, a surprise return wouldn't make it, nothing really made any sense to me. So I just kind of went with the, you know, let's set up for the next pay-per-view. I mean, that's what you should do at WrestleMania in a way. I mean, WrestleMania, you finish all your storylines off, you kind of close it all out, but at the end of WrestleMania, you're going to kind of plant the seeds for what is to come. So that's what I pretty much did. Goldberg had a big big win over John Cena. He beat the hell out of Cena. And the storyline was that Goldberg wanted to main event WrestleMania to begin with, but that was what he wanted the whole time, and John Cena took that away from him. So Goldberg, eventually, you know, he still came out at the main event, still got his main event moment, and uh, he took out Finn ba- uh, AJ Styles, who took out Finn Balor himself, Styles did. And um, that was just kind of to set up where we're going next. Goldberg chasing the um, WWE, champ- WWE Championship. So that's where we're going. And um, 
people didn't get that. If they didn't understand that, then so be it. I mean, that's what I tried to accomplish. If you didn't like that, well, I mean, what can I say? I tried. That's the idea that I had. And if that was not a good idea, then sometimes you hit a miss. And I, I liked it. And I'm still sticking by my gun saying that I thought the ending was fine. I know some people think it was fine as well, which is nice. Other people fucking hated it and wanted to tell me to um, kill myself and my show absolutely sucks. But if that's the case, then that's the case and you live and you learn. But um, that's WrestleMania. So you can tell we had a bit of a, a bit of a lousy time making this video and even reviewing the video at the end. It was a bit of a lousy time, a bit of a lousy pet view, but I think it turned out pretty well. I, I enjoyed it. Um, watching it back, your your reactions to a lot of the things that are happening, happening. You guys really enjoyed a lot of the matches, which was good. I wasn't sure if the matches were going to be WrestleMania quality. I mean, you never know. I mean, I just put them on and hope for the best, pretty much. So it turned out pretty well, and um, I'm very happy with uh, the the show overall. Um, we have the Slammy Awards voting now available as well on the website, brendanplays.com. Click the Slammy Awards button on the right, right hand side of the page or just scroll down to the bottom if you're on mobile and click the Slammy Awards logo so that is available and uh, there is a lot of Slammy Awards to vote on I think there might be like 15 or 16 or 17 something like that so there's a lot of awards and um, they're all on one page and you can go through and pretty much vote on all of them and I think about one minute one minute tops you know read read what you know the, uh, the award is read who you're voting for and boom click the button boom 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 keep it going I try to make it as, as simple as I possibly could. Usually I do it on the forums, and I do it on the forums because it gets you guys in the forums. It gets you guys signed up, and it's a great way to promote the forums to people who don't normally go on it. But also, um, it's very easy to do it on the forums as well. Very organized, very good. I really like it. But um, I tried something different this year, and I think the polls itself look better. The only issue is, is that every um, award, every poll has a freaking advertisement on it. I, it pisses me off. It didn't used to have the ads. You know, the, the poll provider that I used to use, that I use, never used to have the ads. Now, if I want to get rid of them, I got to pay you know stupid amount of money every month, which is not worth it. But um, I think you guys can hopefully ignore the ads for me. If you got ad blocker, by all means, use it on that page because it. I use it. I, I put it on that page. I normally don't use it on my own website, but I put it on that page because that uh, that's driving me nuts. So lots of ads on it. I apologize for that, but I couldn't get rid of them. I tried everything. I tried to look into it as much as I can. How the hell I get rid of these stupid ads? But um, yeah, they got to make their money. But um, yeah, so it's all on one page. Very easy to do. And um, I advise you to go ahead and do that. And um, lots of stuff to vote on. For example... Um, you know, Superstar of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Tag Team of the Year, Pay View of the Year, Brand of the Year, um, Heel Turn, aka Double Cross of the Year, blah, 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 so much stuff. You can go check that out. You can go take a vote and, um, you know, help me um, decide who deserves each Slammy Award. And there's, you know, already some surprise results. Um, a lot of the same guys are winning a lot of the awards. Some awards are quite similar. For example, we have Raw Superstar of the Year, then we have Superstar of the Year, and obviously, if someone's the superstar of the year, they're going to be the raw, you know, SmackDown or Raw superstar of the year. So there's a few sa same, same, but um, still, I think they're all relevant. I think they all apply. So I, I, I don't mind it. I'm pretty happy. So take the, take a look at that, check that out, and, and uh, vote for me there. And so far, so good with that. And again, apologies for the ads. All right, let's get into the WWE and let's talk talking about my own shit. Um, Roblox. I mean, I I had to um take a think and kind of think about when the hell did Roblox happen? Did it happen this week? Or was it last week? I could not honestly. It felt like Roblox was a month ago. Crazy. It just felt like it was forever ago. But it was only a few days ago. Um, I liked it. I mean, I don't have a lot of thoughts about it anymore, really. I mean, that's the, I guess the the problem with doing the show like so long after pay per view. I kind of don't have the thoughts anymore as perhaps I would have um, a couple days ago but um, you know I thought it was okay I think um, I'd probably give it like a big six of six out of five or something like that um, we'll start it off with a tag team match I thought the tag match was one of the best matches of the show I really really enjoyed it very happy the New Day um, lost the titles in that uh, Cesaro and Sheamus one was Cesaro and Sheamus the right pick um, look I think the club probably deserved a run and the, the fact that they've been 
eating shit for the whole year and they've you know, hyped them up as this big team and only to give them absolutely nothing the entire year has really, really hurt their credibility. I think if they had have been the ones to beat the, the tag champs and, and end that reign, they would have just got a bit of heat and would have just started to get some momentum and just do something. But in saying that, Sheamus and Cesaro, I'm not going to say they're a hot act, but I really am enjoying the tag team. I think they are starting to get over the crowd. The crowd cares compared to the club. The crowd couldn't give a shit about the club. So, I'm enjoying um, Sheamus and Cesaro. The only thing I really had an issue with was why were they, you know, doing the whole we still hate each other type of deal, you know? I felt as though, you know, in the match, they're teaming up well, they're working together well, everything is all good, and then at the end, they're like, oh, no, we hate each other. It just didn't quite make sense. I know they're kind of saying, well, in the ring, we get it done, we're on the same page, but we just don't like each other outside of the ring. Well, that's kind of fair enough, but um, I think eventually you've got to have these guys start to team up and, and, and like each other and get along. And I thought after that bar brawl that we're going to start doing that, but it seems as though they're taking a few steps backwards and not doing that anymore. So I guess they probably don't want Sheamus to go babyface because they feel as though, yeah, Cesaro is going to be the one to be cheered. And they are getting a nice reaction every time they do the heel and face type of shit, but um, eventually they've got to probably turn Sheamus and um, you know make this a babyface team. Um, Sheamus as a face, though, sucks, let's be honest. And maybe the plan is still to have Sheamus and Cesaro feud. Maybe they have that one big match at WrestleMania again. Um, I'm guessing that's where they want to go in the end. But um, this could be just a short-term reign, and they lose the titles to someone, and then they have a, a, a match at WrestleMania or something like that. And, you know, it might well be that case, but um, I still feel as though get these guys on the same page, and then maybe Sheamus... Um, turns on Cesaro when they lose the titles or something like that um, down the line. Um, As for the new championship design, I like it. I think it looks a lot better. I really didn't like the bronze copper belts. I thought they were really lame. I like the SmackDown um, version as well, the blue and the silver. The red and the silver looks... um, You know, no, no, I'll say I like it. I do like it. Um, I just got to get a little bit used to it. The only issue I, I have is, I mean... Last week, we unveiled the WWE UK design, the t- title for that um, UK belt. It looks fantastic. Really good. Yes, it's still kind of like the same style, but in the middle, the plates um, look completely different to what we've seen. doesn't have the big stupid w-, w anymore. It's different. looks phenomenal. We Then we look at our tag titles that just got introduced. It's laziness. It's the same title, but a red strap, you know? The same silver but red. I mean, we've got the same belts for the women. One's red, one's blue. We've got the same friggin' title for the men. One red, one's red, one's... I don't know, the other one's black, isn't it? Not quite blue yet. But I'm sure they'll probably change it to blue in the future. I mean, come on. Can we just have something different? What happened back in the day when we had the World Tag Titles and the WWE Tag Titles? One was, you know, a black and a gold. And the other one was like a blue and a gold. It was a little different. A little different. You know, it worked. I thought those designs were okay. You know, we got the IC title and the US title. They're completely different looking titles. You know, I know we didn't have two women's titles, but I guess, you know, you look at the two women's titles. We had the, the stupid butterfly belt and then the red women's title. You know, it's different. It doesn't look exactly the same. So why do we have to have the same style but different colors now? I don't get it. And to be honest, it's just laziness. It's not creative and it doesn't look good. You know, if I'm... It's put myself in storyline. If I'm Stephanie, and the whole storyline, remember the whole storyline between Shane and Stephanie, is, you know, they want to outdo each other. And all they're doing is, in storyline, copying each other, but changing the, the color. Wouldn't you want to make this big, extravagant championship that looks beautiful and amazing that the other brand doesn't have anything like it? Wouldn't that make more sense? But, I mean, come on, they're just lazy. I mean, who... Who's creating this? Who is thinking, oh man, we're really going to change the titles? Okay, great. Let's change the titles. What should we change it to? Let's make the strap red and let's copy the SmackDown and let's make it silver. And then we'll we'll keep the same design. Let's just change the colors. That's all we're going to do. Just change the laziness. Fucking laziness. And I'm I'm sick of it. I don't like it. I mean, the title looks fine. Yes, it does. It it looks good. I, I like it, but... I would just like some something new, something different. 
you know, when they changed the SmackDown one, I thought, alright, fair enough, you know. But then you change the Raw one as well. Then you change that back to the same design, but just a different color. I mean, come on. Surely we can create something different. But for whatever reason, they're refusing to be any somewhat creative at all. I don't know. Is there, are they just running out of ideas? They don't know what design to make, or they just, do they just love this one design so much they want every fucking title to look exactly the same? They love that W sign so much. They love that design, so they've got to have everything look the same, and they love this tag titles. I mean, it'd be nice, just nice to do something different. And even the Cruiserweight title, I'm shocked they didn't do a little W and then have the Cruiserweights hold that, a little purple W. Instead, they actually made something different, and the title looks good. It's actually something different, something unique. You know, we didn't get a little W, we got something completely different, which is nice. But what happened to the rest of the chapters? Why is everything else the same? Why is everything else, you know, just you look at SmackDown and then you flick it over to Raw and you say, well, that's exactly the same, just different, you know, just different color. And I guess that's exactly how the shows feel sometimes. Exactly the same type of show, different just months, one SmackDown, one's Raw. You know, so, I mean, just some different, something different would be nice. Anyways, let's move on. Sami Zayn versus Braun Strowman. Um, a lot of flack about this match. Some people really hated it. I didn't mind it. I mean, Braun Strowman bit the hell out of Sami Zayn. The only thing I didn't like was the the finish, like Sami Zayn winning. I mean, how is that winning if you survive 10 minutes? That, it just didn't make any sense to me. Braun Strowman had the match won. You know, Mick Foley is going to throw in the towel because Braun Strowman beat the living shit out of him so badly that Mick Foley is like begging Strowman not to beat him up anymore. And at the end of the day, Sami Zayn wins because he managed to survive the time limit. I mean, how was that a win? I mean, I don't get that. I mean, it should have just been like match over. That's what I thought it was going to be. Just, all right, Sami Zayn, survive, match over, move on. You know, there's no winner. Strowman didn't get the win. Sami Zayn didn't beat Strowman. It's the time limit. The time limit was reached. But why Why Sami Zayn win? It just doesn't make any sense. Sami Zayn didn't beat him. Yeah, the, the stipulation was, oh, Sami Zayn last 10 minutes, but shouldn't this just be a draw, time limit draw? And they've only, you know, it's like a TV match. It's a, a time limit of 15 minutes, and, oh, we're out of time. The, you know, the mat- match has gone 15 minutes. Call it off. It's done. It's a draw. But instead, we got Sami Zayn as a winner for some reason. I still think Sami Zayn needs to go to SmackDown. It's still, he's just not going to get the opportunities that he needs here on Raw. It's just not happening. Strowman... Um, I definitely feel like they're going to have something big for him for WrestleMania, whether that be Roman Reigns, whether that be Brock Lesnar, I don't know, but they're going to do something big, big with him, and I can't wait. I think Strowman is great. I'm really, really liking him. You know, and I, and I really feel like, you know, with Kane and Big Show on their way out, Braun Strowman is exactly what we need. We've got this big, giant guy who is so intimidating, an absolute beast in the ring, just throwing guys around, looks the part, might not be you know, that great in the ring yet, but he's getting a lot better. You mean, you look at him, you know, I think, was it two years ago that he debuted, something like that, or a year ago? Um, Compared to now, he's gotten a lot better. You know, he is. He's getting better and better and better, and he's going to keep on getting better. And, um, you know, like I said, with those veteran guys going out, this is a perfect replacement. And I see a lot of Kane and Braun Strowman, you know, the size, the presence, you know, the intimidation. You know, Braun doesn't have the mask or anything like that. You know, I certainly think Kane definitely far better than Braun Strowman. And, um, you know, I look at Kane, I'm, I'd be much, much more scared of Kane than Braun Strowman back when Kane was in his prime back in, like, what, 01? When you look at Kane, you're like, holy shit, this guy is an absolute monster. And Braun Strowman definitely has that, but um, not quite to that extent. But um, Strowman is a beast. I hope they keep building him up. I hope they don't, you know, give up on him. If anything, you know, he's doing well. He's getting over. The crowd are, like, starting to really like him, I think. I think... A lot of people are really starting to um, enjoy the big guy again. It's been, you know, a period of time where if you're a big dude, no one cares about you anymore. Pe- people just will refuse to um, give you any praise or anything like that. You know, we went through that period and we're starting to kind of move on from that. You know, I guess we've had a bit period of time in the last probably three or four years where everyone's a lot smaller. You know, the cruiserweight size is starting to be more popular you know, the 200-pound type of look, you know, 220-pound maximum is where um, a lot of the, the favorites are. And anyone who's like, you know, 260, 270, or, you know, 7 foot tall or anything like that really has no chance. But um, we're starting to get back to that. And obviously that's 
for a number of different reasons, you know, whether talent, you know, I think a lot of people really kind of taking a lot more notice in quality of matches these days, you know, work weight, work rate, work rate, you know, you've got to be a good worker, otherwise we can't like you, you know, Roman Reigns, he does the same moves over and over, so we can't like him type of deal, I mean, I think it's a lot of shit, to be honest, I really, you know, you look back in the history of wrestling, you know, a lot of the great guys weren't that great in the ring, they were just fun to watch, they just had the character about them, they had the presence, they just had, had everything, maybe they couldn't put on a, you know, Bret Hart classic, but they didn't need to. And I still think that applies to today's age. I don't think guys need to put on, you know, a Shawn Michaels quality match to be good or, you know, get the belt. They just got to be, you know, look the part, be the part and, you know, be able to put on a good match. But it doesn't have to be something that we've never, you know, out of this world. And I think Braun Strowman's good enough to do that. I think Braun Strowman definitely should be in the main event in 2017. I think he will be um, transitioned as a fully fledged main event guy. Will he get the belt? Um, I could see it. I could see it next year, him winning the belt. I think if they want to do it, go all out, get him a big win at WrestleMania. I hear they still want to do this Big Show feud. If that's the case, fine, whatever. Um, have him squash the Big Show. But um, I, I don't know if he would beat Brock Lesnar, but I would definitely believe um, him going through Roman Reigns would be a big win for him. And I think that would give him a lot of credibility if, if he went through Reigns. And maybe even a bit of fan support. Um, so that might be the next step for him. Win that US title from Roman Reigns, perhaps at WrestleMania. And um, maybe from there, you give him a short reign. And then maybe he comes after the uh, the world title. I definitely could see it. I, I, I'd be all for it, honestly. I mean, why not? The guy, he's got all the other tools, you know. Not the best worker, but he's getting there. And everything else about him is great. Even on the mic, I, I enjoy his... You know, his 45-second promos and Foley and his deep voice. And, you know, he's intimidating. I like it, you know. And, I mean, why not? I think um, I'd be all for it. So, I think next year he might be the, I guess, I'm not going to say breakout, but the, the next guy to kind of move up from that mid-card um, into the main event. And I definitely, obviously, he's got the size of so Vince McMahon and these other guys behind the scenes are going to be all for it. And I'm going to put, we'll definitely push for him to, to get there. But anyways, we are, we're, you know, really halfway through the show already. We haven't really got through that much. Um, Neville's heel turn, loved it. Fantastic. Just exactly what the Cruiserweight division needs. I've been saying it for months, ever since the Cruiserweight division. Where's Neville? Where's Neville? This guy's perfect for the division. Why is this guy not here? He's a guy who is established on TV. He's got a bit of a name. People know who he is. Um, we haven't seen him as a heel on WWE TV yet. We saw him as a heel in NXT, I believe. I mean, I didn't really watch the early, early days of NXT, but I'm pretty sure he was a heel. I watched a few of his matches down there, and I thought it worked pretty well. You know, I was at, um, you know, when I went to WWE Live, uh, NXT Live, uh, a couple of weeks ago, they played Neville versus Sami Zayn, I believe, from NXT, and I think Neville was a heel in that match, and I was just watching that and going, you know what, Neville as a heel, not too bad. I mean, where is this guy? Why is he not doing anything? This guy as a heel is is all right. Next week he turns heel. He's on TV, so that's kind of interesting. Neville's back, and honestly, give this guy the belt right now, ASAP. Next time there's a title match, give Neville the fucking belt and let this guy hold it and hold it and hold it because this guy as a heel has just light lightened up this whole division. This division a month ago was the drizzling shits. It still sucks, but this one guy he's gained a lot of interest in, for me personally. I went out of my way to watch 205 this week just to watch Neville's match. Just wanted to see what Neville was doing, just how he was going to be used now. This guy, is this look he's got, he's such a weird looking dude. He's like an angry elf. And I'm, <laughs> Let's just be honest, he looks like, a, like an angry elf. He's really, you know, he's the scowl on his face, the real angry look on his face. It works, and Honestly, on Raw, he cut the best promo I've ever heard him cut. You know, his promos have been so awful. His accent, really tough to understand at times, but he was a lot easier on this heel promo. Um, and I don't really... I, I struggle with accents. I'm not going to be... You know, the UK accent, not so bad. Um, other accents where people speak, you know, a language other than English, and they speak English, it's, it's, sometimes I kind of struggle with it. So I do struggle a bit with accents, but generally, the English accent, not too bad. But um, So I never really had too much of a problem with the likes of Becky Lynch or, or Neville in understanding them. So that's been fine for me.
But I really thought Neville cut a great promo, and the reason why he's, you know, turned heel, you know, people, you people, you know, cheered me, you know, at um, Roadblock, why haven't you been cheering me, you forgot about me, you didn't care about me, blah, 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 it made sense, it's a good storyline to start him off with, I like it, everything they've done so far is great, I'm really, really liking this heel turn, it just goes to show, you know, sometimes you switch up a character, you do something, and you just breathe new life into someone, Neville, the guy was dead in the water, and now I think, you know, if I'm creative, if I'm, you know, booking this show, if I'm Vince, I'm sitting back, and they're probably thinking, all right, let's try this guy. We've got no one else. We're running out of options. This is how I believe they're seeing it. We're running out of options. TJ Perkins is horrible. He couldn't get over it for the life of him. Brian Kendrick is struggling. You know, he's trying his best, but it's just not working. Rich Swan's getting a smattering of applause, just, you know, a polite applause here and there. He's trying... The crowd, they're not sure if they want to like him or not. But the jury's still out on him. He's doing okay. So they're probably thinking, well, all right, let's do a shock. Let's give him a heel turn. Let's try and do something different. Let's try Neville. Everyone wants to see Neville in this division. Let's do it. Let's turn him heel. Let's see how it goes. And I really feel like this was their last, you know, their last play, their last power play. It worked. It has worked. Neville's been great. It's so far so good. And I say... Whatever plans they had for Rich Swan, I'm sorry. You've got to give that belt to Neville. And then have the entire division, Mutiny, come together and try and get this title from Neville. Get this title from this guy who's just an absolute dick. And Neville, he's got a, a good build. You know, for a guy who's under 205, if he apparently is. I don't know if he actually is. I mean, his height may be, be the reason why he is. But if anything, you know, this guy's a really built dude. I've always seen his body type. is really strange. Very built in the upper body for a guy who's a small man in terms of um, height he's very very built and he's he looks uh, uh, he separates himself quite well from the rest of the of the division so I'm not saying you can build him as a, up as a monster but you can definitely build him up as a bit of an ass kicker and he has been he comes out of the ring and just kicking ass he's just going through everyone taking everyone out and he's just been steamrolling through everyone. And I like it. I think it's been working. I would keep going in that direction. Just have this guy dominate. You know, this guy, he's been on WWE for a while. You know, he's you know been this and that. And, you know, have this guy, you know, hey, I've been around here for a while. I, I'm good enough. I'm better than everyone in this division. I'm coming here. And I think the commentary said it best. I think Corey Graves might have said it. You know, this guy's... You know, he could be a U.S. champion, he could be whatever he want, but he's just going to come to come down to the cruiserweight division and dominate it forever. And I feel like that's the way they're kind of booking and, and, and showcasing Neville. It's been very, very impressive so far. And this guy, I'm not sure if he's the saving grace for this division, but I think this guy really has a big, big potential to just get a few more eyes on it, a bit more attention. And him as a champion, I think, will really work because people know who he is. They've been watching him for the last couple of years on NXT and on, and on WWE. Yes, he's been a failure. Let's be honest. He was an absolute failure. Crowd just didn't, couldn't care for him. Their booking for him was atrocious too. It was, it was abysmal. It's WWE's fault and probably partly Neville's fault as well. But Neville in the ring is an incredible talent. It's an absolute... It's criminal that he's been a waste you know, for the last six months. He hasn't done anything. You know, He was out with injury. That didn't help. But you know, now that he's back, he's really been doing nothing. It's time that you start doing something with this guy. And this is the perfect division, a perfect title for him to hold. And there's really no one else in this division that could really make a case for them deserving it more than him. No one else. No one else is over. Neville's done a great job, you know, already. In the first couple of days, he's already done a lot more than the rest of these guys have in the last three months. So he's doing good. Give him that title and let him run with it. Um, we'll quickly run through the rest of Roadblock, the Iron Man match between Sartre and Charlotte. Um, I did not watch this match at all until like the last minute. I just couldn't care. It just, it just wasn't good. This was probably one of the worst Iron Man matches I've seen. You know, I had it in the background. I just, I tried. I, I, I just, I've just seen it all so much now. I just couldn't care and I just lost my interest. And I, I knew it was going to go over time. I just knew it. I mean, they just wanted to drag it out even longer. Charlotte um, making Sasha tap the last two seconds of the match was just moronic. I mean, come on. You, you look up at the clock, and you can't last in that figure eight for two more seconds. I mean, come on. I think a better finish, well, that would mean that 
um, that um, Sasha was going to win. But I think a better finish would have been, you know, Sasha hanging on. Charlotte winning the belt back as well. I mean, how many times she's going to win it? Is she going to chase Ric Flair's 16 title reign record? I think Charlotte could get there before Cena does. I mean, my God, she's already on four title wins and she's lost the title and won it back, what, three times in the last, you know, six months? Sasha's won it a couple times already too and barely held it for like a week at a time. She, you know, she loses it before she even, you know, faster than she wins it. So, you know, look, this whole flip-flopping back and forth between the division is not good. Um, I'm glad it's finally over though. Thank God. Charlotte's a champion. She's a better champion, I agree. But the Sasha Banks and Charlotte rivalry, whilst, don't get me wrong, it's been fantastic. It'll go down as one of the great women rivalries of all time. Without a doubt, lots of great matches, and they really um, set the bar for the future. They got a lot of new things to happen. They got false counting matches, no DQ matches. They got Hell in a Cell matches. Terrific. But it had to end, and this Iron Man match to finish was just the worst idea ever. Because now we have to sit through, what, 35 minutes of, of, ma- of another match between these two when we've already seen, you know, these guys, these two women wrestle for 20 minutes, you know, a month ago. You know, what more can we possibly see? And it's hard for them, for the two women as well, to top their recent performances. They had a Hell in a Cell match, you know, to try and outdo, you know, all these different things that they've been able to do. They've got to go in this Iron Man match and outdo themselves. It's just an impossible task. They're just setting themselves up for failure. So Iron Man match was a colossal failure of an idea. Just terrible idea. Um, Charlotte now champion again. Moving on to Bailey. That's fine. Nia Jax and Sasha. Okay. Um, that's good as well, and um, we'll see. I think um, Raw's women's division just needs a bit of new life, and it, even SmackDown as well. You know, I guess they're still going with the Becky Lynch and, and uh, Alexa Bliss thing, but that's got to end soon as well, in my opinion. And I still think there's a bit of life still in the Carmella and Nikki feud on SmackDown, and even Natalia's now involved as well. I'm not minding that. I'm liking that, but um, they're just dragging feuds out for a little bit too long. It's It's a case of all areas of the show. Um, AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose went on and on and on. You know, it seems like they've got such a lack of depth in their rosters. They have to drag these feuds out for as long as they possibly can and they just burn it into the ground in the end because they don't really have anyone else to go to. Especially on SmackDown, it's kind of Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles and that's it. Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton are busy. So they've really got no one else to turn to to feud, and they've had to bring up Dolph Ziggler. They have to get the Miz involved, do different things there to try and you know keep it going. And they're just struggling from a lack of um, depth in their main event division. Same thing for the women's division on Raw. But they have Nia Jax and Bailey they can go to. They just haven't done that. They even got Emma who's sitting there doing nothing, who is just as good as any of these women in my opinion. I think Emma's fantastic. She's doing nothing, and I, I can't believe they haven't debuted her yet. I, I don't know what they're doing with her. They've got to get her in there soon. Otherwise, when she does come, people just won't care. I think people are ready to see her now. Now's the time to debut, and I think you've got to do it maybe next week. Uh, I can maybe see them you know, holding off this week, because it's more... It wasn't necessarily a Christmas-type show, but it had a lot of Christmas element to it. And generally, a lot of people tune out for the Christmas... Um, the shows near Christmas. So I understand that if they wanted to hold out for a big moment. Obviously, they held out for the Cena return until next week. So if they want to do it next week, that's fine, but they've got to do it soon before people say, well, I don't really care. About time. You know, they want people... They built her up, built her up enough, I think, before they delayed it to when she was actually going to debut. I thought, okay... Good time. They built her up enough. I'm ready to see her. And then another week passed, and now it's been another week, and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm, I mean, we're waiting. She's premiering, premiering soon. Well, can you premiere now? I'm ready. So if you wait a little bit more longer, it's not going to be very effective. Um, we'll finish up on the uh, the Roblox stuff. Jericho and Rollins, good match. That's all I really have to say about that. Owens and Reigns, um, it was all right. Not the best match of the show. Um... It was okay. Jericho teasing that he was going to turn on Owens and then end up helping Owens out was good. Uh, I'm glad they're not going with the the turn there. I really felt they they got me. I actually really felt as though, well, shit, they're actually going to you know break these two guys up. But the whole time I'm thinking, no way, they're not going to break up. They're not going to break up. But you know, on Roadblock, I was convinced. You know, Jericho didn't want the present. I'm like, all right, I'm convinced. They're going to break it up and they're going to go with Jericho and Owens for the Royal Rumble. 
nope, they've changed ways, and Jericho, you know, teases again, and then, um, you know, a bit of a swerve. So that was nice. That was nice. I was a nice little surprise, Jericho, and I got a bit of a smile out of that. I was pretty happy about that. All right, Raw, let's get there. Um, happy with the more aggression from Cass. I like the little rivalry they're doing with Rusev and Cass, even though Rusev should be the baby face. But um, Big Cash showing some more aggression is good. Um, really happy the Cruiserweights are getting more storylines. And I say that with, uh, you know, Noam Dar and um, Cedric Alexander, Alicia Fox, <laughs> that type of rivalry they're doing there. Fighting over Alicia Fox is stupid, but it's something. It's a little storyline and, you know, it gives, gives you a reason to watch the match and have a bit more, pay a bit more attention to it. Now, when it's just a straight up, this is a Cruiserweight match. All right. Okay, who cares? But when it's like, all right, these two guys are fighting over Alicia Fox. They both like her. You know, you know we'll see who she picks. That's okay. And it, Noam Dar looks like a creepy stalker type of dude, like this little stalker guy who wants the chick so bad, just just can't get her, and he's a real creepy dude. I don't know. It, it's okay. You know, it's something. Storylines are good for the Cruiserweights. Now, I feel like right now, after a couple months... They've now established a lot of these guys. They've now built characters for a lot of these guys. Storylines are coming in. The Cruiserweights are just starting to get rolling a little bit. You know, with the 205 Live show now, it's going to help out. Still, a lot of characters in this Cruiserweight division that I could not care less about. But they're slowly introducing more. And they're slowly getting more storylines and more character development. It's going okay. There's a lot of guys there who haven't really got that yet. But the ones that they're really showcasing a lot more do and it's working and it's starting to get better the crowd's still not quite into it but hopefully that will come hopefully the cruiserweights will keep on getting better they're doing a lot of the right things right now to help it and that's good um roman reigns versus kevin owens at the royal rumble is confirmed with jericho going to be in the cage above the ring um uh, my thoughts are this is what a ripoff of uh nxt i mean they did the paul ellering in the cage for the dusty Rhodes classic final match um, and now, all of a sudden, a month later, they're going to do it on uh, at the Royal Rumble. I mean, it makes sense why they did it. I think maybe more so than the Paul Ellering thing, uh, it makes more sense. I think Ellering, does he really get involved? I don't watch a lot of NXT, but does he really get involved in the matches? Not really. Whereas Jericho is always interfering, always doing something. So if it's going to make sense, it makes more sense for this one. But I just think the timing, considering they did it in NXT a month ago, and now they're doing it here on Raw... Um, just the timing is just like, eh, we just saw that, but whatever. So it didn't feel as special as it perhaps could have been, you know, if they didn't do the Ellering one. Um, for SmackDown this week, I really like the fact that they're doing real-life storylines and you, uh, introducing a lot of real-life elements into the storylines. That's what I wanted to say. So they're doing the whole relationship relationship thing, you know, Carmella talking about John Cena with Nikki Bella. And this week we saw Ambrose and Renee Young brought up by... The Miz, so that's the first time we've kind of established that on TV, that Renee and Ambrose are together, and Renee gave the slap to Miz, it wasn't a very good slap, I don't think, but to be fair, she probably hasn't slapped that many people, she seems like a very nice person, I don't think she's slapping too many people, but um, yeah, so they're gonna get, are they going to involve her in the storyline, are we going to see The Miz and Renee Young have a cat fight, are we going to go down that way, I mean, very possible, my opinion, I think pairing Renee and Ambrose to get, together would be very, very bad. I think Dean Ambrose by himself is a good act. I think Ambrose has got to turn heel soon. But anyways, Ambrose by himself is a good act. And Renee Young, who probably doesn't know what she's doing as a manager or anything like that, we see her just as this interview girl and the host of, you know, the pre-shows and the post-shows. Her being involved, I think, is not a great idea. I just feel like the crowd's not going to like it. I just feel like it's just going to be awkward and weird seeing them together on TV. Yeah, they'd be together in real life, by all means. Um, but just on TV, I just feel like it's going to be a little awkward. Just a little awkward. But, um, you know, that's just my sentiment. Hey, you know, you know, I could be surprised. It could be fantastic. But I'm just, my guess, my judgment is it just won't work that well. But anyways, I really like the real life elements into the storylines. And they're going to try and do that a little bit more without going overboard with it. Um, but it is working, you know, because people know that Ambrose and Renee Young are together. People know that Cena and Nikki Bella are together. I think the fact that they try and hide it, you know, people know these things. So when you, you know, you put it on TV, it's like, all right, well, we know this, but that's good. You know, you're actually going to start admitting to it and kind of working with it in your own favor. SmackDown are doing that, and I like it. 
it works. I think people starting to care a bit more. And um, Natalia um, using bitch over and over and over was um, interesting. And, you know, she's finally admitting to the attack on Nikki Bella. So they're kind of going the Nikki and Natalia feud now. I like that. I like that interaction there. Natalia normally is horrible on the mic, but she was a little bit better this week. And, um, yeah, so that feud's kicked off, I guess. And um, I'm not minding it. So they're doing some good stuff for the women there on SmackDown. The whole Alexa Bliss and the Becky Lynch, the whole Lucha Libre thing... I knew as soon as Becky Lynch came out that it was her. You could see it. They had a close-up of her eyes, and you could just see her eyes, and the, her makeup that she does, and her look. And she was even yelling out things, you know. You could tell it was her, in her accent. You could just tell it was her. Um, so it was pretty obvious, but um, still, it was fine, you know. Gets the one up on uh, like Alexa Bliss, so outsmarts Bliss for once, so that's fine. Um... Uh, Mojo Rawley as a singles now that Zack Ryder officially gone for four to six months it seems can I kind of push Mojo Rawley as a singles eh, I hope not um, I think he he's got a, a lot of work to do he just does not impress me whatsoever I just I've got really zero care for that guy at all but you know they're going to try it see how he goes as a singles why Zack's not around they might as well use the guy Either that or send him back to NXT. That's really it. Um, but we'll see. I think um, they definitely need some more mid-card guys. And, um, you know, if he wants to step up to take on the Miz and get beat in the five minutes, then that's fine. You know, so they can see how he goes. I'm glad James Ellsworth lost to AJ Styles. I'm really starting to get sick of James Ellsworth. And I know I apologize. I know a lot of you guys love the guy. But I'm just getting tired of it. Just the whole Ellsworth thing. I just... I think they should have went with the heel turn, uh, to be honest. And that's that would have been the only way, in my opinion, they could have kept this thing going. Now it's like, well, he's no longer with Ambrose. He's just by himself, and he's getting beat up all the time. And I know they what teasing them with Carmella. I don't know what they're doing there. But I just, yeah, I, I don't know, man. i just just tired of it. I'm just not feeling it anymore. Just not caring about the guy. Um, John Cena returns next week as well. Question kind of is right now, who faces AJ Styles at the Rumble? They're doing the Dolph Ziggler and AJ Styles match. They're going to drag that out to the Royal Rumble? I don't think so. I think they want to sell the Royal Rumble out big time. A lot of rumors that it's going to be The Undertaker. I don't think it's going to be The Undertaker. I think Cena's going to come back, and it's going to be John Cena and AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble. I think that's what you're going to see. I think Cena will come back. He'll challenge Styles after you know, the Ziggler match maybe or whatever, and um, they'll kick off that rivalry for a bit. I don't think Cena's going to be back on every show. I, I feel like he's going to be dipping in and out until the Royal Rumble and, you know, even WrestleMania season. That's just my opinion. But he could be back all the time. I mean, he only has to work one show a week if, if, if that's the case. But um, I feel like he's still doing some other things. I don't know. I don't know his schedule, but that's just the interpretation I get. So we'll see. But um, I definitely think he's either A, going to put himself in the Royal Rumble match or he'll come back and uh, challenge Styles for the title at the Rumble. And I think that would be the better call. Cena and Styles is a much bigger match than... Um, Ziggler and uh, Styles, so that's what I would be doing anyways. Um, for NXT, a couple things on NXT this week. Um, Bobby Roode, number one contender to take on Nakamura at NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Is this the time where we give um, give Bobby Roode the, the NXT title? Have Nakamura lose it to Roode? Nakamura's already lost a couple times now, so him losing um, isn't as big a deal anymore, but um, him losing to Bobby Roode I think would be good. I think Bobby Roode... He's my favorite. He's my favorite. My two favorite NXT guys battling it out. But I've got to say, Bobby Roode, I think, has got to be champion. He's so good. Gets a great reaction. Crowd love him. Battle of the entrances. It's going to be pretty epic just watching the entrances. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, Will either guy go to the main roster if they lose? I don't think so. I think Nakamura, his chances of going to main roster will be after WrestleMania. I mean, I think Bobby Roode will be hanging around in NXT just a little while longer considering he hasn't been all that, been there all that long, and they definitely need some guys to help sell tickets for their NXT shows. And if they're going to do some more tours, um, they're going to probably need both guys. So maybe either guy might not be going up soon. But Nakamura um, doesn't need to be in NXT much longer. He needs to move up. Small little rumor going around that Samoa Joe might be moving up. Um, he's got a bit of an injury right now, and... Um, just trying to keep him healthy for the Raw Rumble type of deal. I mean, there is even a rumor going around that he might be taking on AJ Styles. I don't know about that, but um, 
I definitely feel like it's time for Samoa Joe to move up, and I think the other two, Nakamura and Rue, could stay down there for a little longer, but I feel like Nakamura after WrestleMania has got to be heavily considered. Considering I feel like they're going to move Austin Aries up as well when he's healthy, I think he's going to be straight into the cruiserweight division. That's why they've got him as a commentator, because when he's healthy to get back in the ring from his eye injury, he'll be back in there, a part of the uh, cruiserweight division, which I think um, I think that'll be good. I mean, that's a good way to get him in there. He's obviously not that big of a dude, so, you know, that's not too bad. Like, it's, it's not, you know, he's not going to be world champion, but it's not a demotion for him to help in that cruiserweight division and help um, make that stronger. So, you know, Austin Aries, I think, would be perfect for it. So, that's fine. So, yeah, they're going to lose a lot of um, guys from NXT, I think, soon. So Bobby Roode might be the one guy that hangs around in there and um, helps carry the show for a while. Um, Ty Dillinger is another guy I think could be ready to move up. Um, it's been a long time in the making, but he's really starting to, to uh, get himself over and get a lot of crowd support. So I think he's just about got his gimmick down packed, and um, I think he's just about ready as well. So a couple guys I can see moving up after WrestleMania at this point. And um, Percy Watson... I uh, didn't comment on it last week or whenever the hell he became the NXT commentator, but he's now commentating on NXT. Um, first thoughts, he's okay. He's just okay. It'll take up some time to get into the groove. Very surprising that they brought him back, though. I mean, I, I'm shocked, to be honest. Quite possible that um, someone like Nigel McGuinness could come in there and take his spot in the future if they want to have Nigel to be a part of NXT, unless if, if they're not going to make a fully-fledged UK show. Um, so we'll see, but, um, he might not be around permanently. I feel like they're going to transition Corey Graves out very soon, which they have to. Corey Graves is doing so much work. It's ridiculous, the poor guy, but, um, they're going to transition Graves out pretty soon and, um, do something there. And, uh, Percy Watson, you know, not a bad, very left field, but, um, didn't make it as a wrestler. Very surprised they brought him back, but it's great for him. He's got another chance to make it here as a commentator. We'll see how he goes. But um, hopefully he's better than the likes of Otunga and Byron Saxon because our color commentators are terrible. And by the way, JBL, I mean, this guy, he's getting everyone's names wrong. It's not even like once off now. It's really happening a lot. JBL is calling everyone by the wrong names. He's calling, just saying everything wrong. JBL, I think, needs to take some time off just to reset because he's all over the place right now. Really, really bad. Um, JBL is just going to... Take six months, like three months maybe. Just take a break, come back, reset yourself, refresh, because you're just all over the place right now, my friend. And um, that pretty much concludes this week's edition of the L Double T podcast. Um, we're just about approaching an hour. That's all I want to do this week. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone out there. I hope you all have a great time and um, eat a lot of food. That's what I want to do. I want to. Best time of Christmas is always, you know, you get the the big roast pork. I don't like turkey, but we normally have like the hams and the pork it's it's and it's fantastic it's it really is it's great and spend some time with the family as well and um hopefully you get what you want from santa hopefully christmas is kind to you my present to you i will give you the draft edition of universe mode that's my one present that's all i can offer i'm not going to give anything else but um i'm not that nice maybe i'm the grinch but maybe i'll just give you one little episode of the draft and hopefully you guys enjoy that hopefully you, you guys enjoy this week's edition of the old double d podcast as well and um, a little lot really happening in wrestling at the moment. We're kind of in a bit of a lull period until the Royal Rumble. But um, I'd say in two or, three, two or three weeks' time, it'll start to pick up a bit. And we'll be ready to go with some more big episodes of the podcast. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you can, leave a like on this episode. Spread the show around to your friends. Tell a friend who likes listening to wrestling podcasts to check out this one. Maybe they'll like it. Maybe they won't. Who knows? You never know until you try it. And um, subscribe if you haven't already to see more episodes coming up in the near future. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, vote on the Slammy Awards as well on the website, brendanplays.com. If you can, get some time to vote on the Slammy Awards. It's over there as well. Check out WrestleMania if you haven't already as well. Thanks, guys, for watching. And I'll see you all next week.